that nice rumble. Well, guys, you see the title. You see what we are up to. So let's talk about it. Yep, I did it again. I bought another Porsche. Let's talk about what happened with the first Porsche. As you know, in the car business, I may switch those videos around to the GPS kills. I don't know, there's two playlists. There's the car business playlist and there's the GPS kill switches. I'll probably list both of them in the comments. So if you haven't seen that, you can be updated. I've been doing this, this is the beginning of my third, my 12th week going on three months in the car rental business. And when this happened, this pretty much happened the first month of the car business. And it literally blew my mind that someone would rent my car and then sell it on Craigslist two days later. And the decision to sell that Porsche, which I regret because I should have kept it, the decision to sell it was purely emotional. And I was upset, I was pissed off, I didn't have my GPS kill switches. It was just a really, really bad time for me. And one of the things I'm looking at, there's emotion and there's data. The data on the Porsche was it did well on Turo, it did well on hire car. And I feel this one has a recall issue that I got to get fixed August 6th. It's on hire car. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. And it's, it will be on Turo once I get this recall issue fixed. And the data says, because essentially if I had kept the Porsche and I didn't have Darius, I still got to go downtown to swear out a warrant for his arrest just to cause him some little pain in his life. Um, that car would have made me, the car cost me 18000 It had a repair of 1800 So it was $20,000. If I had that car in my possession and was renting it, I would have probably made close to four or $5,000. And once again, there's how I feel. And then there is data. And I'm going, you know, I'm running my business on data, not emotion, not how I feel, not what looks good, not what sounds good. And the data on this says that these bad boys ran out. Now, this one has the GPS kill switch. So what happened the first time, it's not gonna happen with this one. Essentially, uh, this is what's funny. I have it listed on hire car and I have it listed on Turo. And with hire car, you can only list it up. You have to call in if you want a price greater than $70. And I listed it and it went live on the marketplace like two or three hours. And I had like a whole bunch of people trying to get this car for $70 a day. And you know what's funny? The majority of them were two day rentals. There was one person with a four day rental and this was before I had the GPS kill switch in it. And I wasn't going to rent this out without the GPS kill switch. So I just rejected them all. And now the price is $130 a day. Not, I, I haven't had a request for it because this is funny. Uh, I rented out a car to a guy who actually ran over some nails. Because essentially, this is something that I got to write up a policy stating that if you flatten the tires you got to pay for the tires you got to get it towed because uh it was a strange incident that happened where the tire came off the rim and essentially they really quick to call me for some stuff they did i couldn't figure out and i just got called from pet boys that there are nails in the tire and i'm like oh so he ran over something like once again so i got got but in the future I'm going to like, hey, if you run over some, I need to start. And this is just more data points, more learning that if you go ahead and do something and the tires go flat, you got to get it towed. You got to get those tires repaired. If I have to do that, I'm taking it back. 
And essentially that's what happened because uh, that vehicle is out of his hands because I didn't know what happened. I went ahead and leased him, rented him another one. So we will see. But essentially he ran over some nails on both back tires. And yeah, that's why the, you know, cause I was just like, why would a tire come off the rim? And the technician said immediately, oh, it was losing air. So he ran over something and it caused the tire to lose air and the tire came off the rim. And when the tire comes off the rim, it's like cracked and messed up. So you just can't put it back on there. So I'm gonna have a BMW with three of one kind of tire and a fourth tire that's not the original. And I'm just gonna live with it because it's a rental, man, it's a rental. But going back to the Porsche, um, more than likely in the future, I will buy more Porsches. Why? Because they rent. And um, I've kind of come to a place where I've calmed down, where I am um, more level-headed. Because like I said, that I wish I hadn't sold the Porsche. I was just so disgusted with the whole process because once again, I have a greater understanding of young black folks. There are some uh, beautiful, amazing, wonderful young black folks. And there's a group that's just trash. And I have to go ahead and or in position myself to be around the young, beautiful, amazing black folks and get away from the trash. And one of the things that indicates trash is a two day rental. I had a whole bunch of two day rentals for 70 bucks a day. And I guarantee you, there was a quite a few, if I had rented to them, they would have, they paid for two days and they would have been late the third day. I guarantee it. Cause I was just going through profiles. There was a bunch of people who were first time renters that just joined the platform. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that because one of the things I have learned, hold on a second, to get out that sun, that sun, that sun was a, a little hot. But one of the things I have learned very shortly is the best rentals are the weekly rentals because the people, because I've, I've seen this, someone will rent for two days and they'll keep doing two days and eventually they will go late. And the best rentals have been the week long rentals, which means I may have to sit on the car for a bit which is cool because a week long renter is gonna be much better than someone who rents for two days and consistently goes late. Cause I got someone, I got, I got a D horse because he's consistently late. And he asked me, he asked me, could I lower the price? So you late and then you want me to take less money and you gonna be late. No, I actually told him, I said, look, uh, when you bring it back, I'm raising the price. So I'm not lowering the price. He's like, oh, okay. And uh, I think he lost the key because every time I ask him, did he find that key? He, he doesn't say anything. And these keys are crazy expensive. This car only comes with one key. Another key, because I got to go to Porsche, it's $4.95 for the key and 80 bucks to program the key. So that's a $600 key for this Porsche. And I'm gonna get me another one. Just go ahead and do it. Because one of the things I've learned is I'm just going to have an add an additional $2,000 per car for GPS kill switches. The GPS kill switches are $200 and $350. So that's $550 for the GPS kill switch alone. And I'm just gonna add, you know, in my mind, I buy a car, I'm just gonna add $2,000 for repairs, services, because essentially what I am finding out is the so-called Camrys and Acras, they're older. I don't think you're gonna have these issues with the newer ones, but I'm finding that they're having just as many issues as these BMWs and the Range Rovers and because age, man, age. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm, I'm shifting the fleet. I'm shifting the fleet and I'm gonna buy more expensive cars. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep it at 2010, 2011, 2012. 
because those model years, uh, I've got three, I got a 2010 Acura, a 2012 Acura, 2013 Acura, and the 2005 Acura. The 2005 Acura had $2,000 worth of work done. So what I'm going to do going forward is get more stuff like this because essentially this will go out on hire car sooner or later it's just not going to go cheap because one of the things i've learned is i got to keep my vehicles out the hands of the animals and like 70 bucks a day that's something anybody can do and this is where the problems start this is where a lot of the problems started for me and i'm like hmm okay lesson learned we're not going to do that anymore because if i have to sit on this for two weeks until it goes to an appropriate renter that's cool i paid cash for it so i don't have a car payment i have to worry about and something else too i am probably going to start putting full coverage on these cars because when I was filing my latest police report, I heard that crime is off the chart and they're stealing cars off the lot. And liability insurance doesn't cover stolen vehicles. So for the cheaper, you know, I'm going to leave liability on them. But for this, I'm going to call Geico today and put full coverage on this, full coverage on the BMW. And I have full coverage on the Mercedes. These are my most expensive cars. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to put full coverage on the Range Rovers. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, possibly, which will increase my monthly cost basis by 60, 60 bucks per car. So instead of paying, because I think right now my insurance is about 1200 for the whole fleet and it will go up to 13, 1400, which isn't a big increase for the whole fleet. And that's what I think I'm gonna do because I have people stalking me and I have to be aware of what I'm dealing with. So I can very well go to my office and drive up and see a car missing because someone stole it. This is a possibility. I gotta think like that. I gotta prepare for that. And the way it is, this just has liability on it until after I go in and do switch it up. Uh, I'll be screwed. I'll be out of thirty thousand uh, dollars. We ain't doing that. So I got to go ahead and anything that's like this is going to have full coverage because, you know, for you guys who have um, Toro fleets and stuff, your nicer inventory, whatever you whatever deal that you come up with. You're going to have to have, in my opinion, full coverage on your nicer inventory in case while it's not rented, it gets stolen. Because as someone who's had one, two, three, four stolen cars, and four times I had to call the police, it can happen. You know, essentially, if someone on um, hire car had this car and they stole it, I would be covered because it was rented. But when it's sitting in my parking lot, it ain't covered. So I got to prepare for that. I got to set up for that. So that's what I'm going to do. Do that today. But like I said, um, the beginning of week 12, it's very interesting. Um, part of the big issue is keeping my fleet together. Because essentially when you have a car that goes down and you got to take it in for service, there's no telling when you're going to get that car back. Because if it's just a simple service with stuff they have in house, you can get that back the same day or something to get their hands on. But if they got to wait for parts, your car could be sitting for weeks, weeks. And that's weeks that ain't making no money. So. I'm working really hard on better renter selection and I'm working hard on the fleet because one thing that I've learned and many of you have expressed it in the comments, God bless you guys, but that ain't where the juice is. That's not where the sauce is. 
these cheap cars can be problematic. They can be really, really problematic. They can be uh, expensive to maintain, expensive to fix, and they can be hard to keep on the road. So I am moving away from these really cheap cars. I have a few in my fleet that I'm getting rid of, and I'm gonna switch out to something else, which means I'm gonna take a little hit on the trade-in, and then I'm going to uh, trade this car in, and then I'm going to have to put some more money with it to get another car, because the, the Camry that Roe Hard put up wet I got room to wiggle in that, so I could go ahead and trade that in. And like, say they gave me six thousand, the car is already made for, so I would still be to the good. But this other Camry uh, that was wrecked, I will be to the good on that. And the Acura TL, I will take an L. And I have a gray Camry that isn't wrecked or anything, and. Um, I should be able to trade out of that pretty easily. So essentially, month of August will be reshifting the fleet, and then we should be coming toward the end of all these repair costs. Because honestly, I don't think the majority of people who have cars take care of them. I got a few cars that have been taken care of and they're not giving me issues and then like this Camry that was just cutting off on this girl the last render before her he was really hard on that car and you know I was in a uber with someone who was renting a car and that car didn't even look like it was driven it was clean it wasn't dented up it wasn't messed up so the renter I gotta really work on sizing up the renter because there are some people who don't drive, just drive the cars, they trash the cars. Like these animals that trash the X5. I'm just like, how do you do that? And once again, Aunt Inez, they ain't never had nothing. They ain't never had nothing. And they don't know how to take care of stuff. So I will probably, like I said, get another Porsche. Um, Cause the data, indicates that these bad boys rent and I'm over I'm out of my feelings because I was all up in my feelings I was just like disgusted pissed off angry and I was just sitting there like okay and but now I'm back in my more business mind and like I said I really wish I hadn't have sold it I should have just threw it back in the fleet and uh, just kept going because Someone would have rented it probably the next day. And one of the things that um, I am learning is my instincts are really, really good. Like I knew the chick that lived in the hotel. I knew she was going to be a problem. I knew it. But I rented the car to her because I had a GPS kill switch. And the girl that I rented the BMW, I don't think she's going to be a problem. I don't think she's going to be a problem. So I got to really start sizing up people. And also I got to create a policy that if you, if you got tire issues, if the tire's going flat, you ran over some, cause that's what I told this dude. And pet boys told me there were nails in the tires. And I was like, there we go. Cause essentially uh, tires on these BMWs are really expensive. They're really expensive. And you need the right tire for these cars so they don't drive right. So he ran over some, and I, I had to take an L on that to the tune of $440. And I'm just sitting there like, between the toe and the tire, and I gotta have a conversation, especially if they're young. I'm like, look, you got this car. If you're driving, you know, like, if you drive over a nail and the tire goes flat, you gotta get that fixed. You cannot be calling me at eight, nine o'clock because essentially I understand the comfort of calling me. It's like, yeah, I don't have to worry about paying for this. And this is this leads to a level of recklessness, re being reckless. But essentially, I got the car back 
from a mechanical standpoint, the car is fine. And I just got to clean it up. And once again, because the tire issue, which he caused, it ain't gonna, I got to put gas in it. And I'm just going to take it. I'm going to just charge it to the game. I'm just charge it to the game. But I'm learning three months in. And many of you like hire someone, hire someone to do what? I'm still learning how to do this business. So before I can hire someone to run the business for me, I gotta know how to run the business and I'm still learning that. I, I know a lot of you are watching all these fake YouTubers who are saying you can start these businesses ridiculously fast, but hold up on that, hold up on that. Because the reality is it takes time and effort to start a business and I will show you the true process of starting a business because this month, We're at almost 14,000. If I didn't have the yard birds, the yard birds cost me a lot of money. And I got one police report was filed yesterday. So that car should be coming back sometime next week. And I have another one that's developing. These are cars without the GPS kill switches. And going forward by September, everything should have a GPS kill switch but that I want to have a GPS kill switch because I have to have those on my nicer inventory because if the wrong person gets it, they don't, they, they have no problem keeping my car, driving it every day and not paying for it. Depreciating the asset, costing me money in the depreciation, costing me money not paying me and costing me money from an opportunity standpoint because like the BMW I got back last night, it will probably go out today or tomorrow. So essentially by keeping my car and not paying me, you're costing me money three times. Depreciation, not paying me, and the lost opportunity cost. So I'm, I'm really starting to, like, like I said, that week that I had all these issues and I got my vehicles back, we're, we're getting toward the end of that stuff because the GPS kill, kill switch is a game changer. It is a game changer. And since the hotel chick, I haven't had to use it. I just take, I just be watching people where they live, where they drive and all this other stuff. But yeah, the GPS kill switches are a serious game changer. And if you have anything nice, you're gonna need a GPS kill switch. I don't care what it is. I would say if you have a car that's 15 to 25,000 in your inventory, you're gonna need a GPS kill switch and not just a GPS. Like, I gotta check and see if I can do a geofence. Um, I did not know, because now that I have the GPS, I had a guy who rented, uh, he's rented from me before. So I really didn't worry about it. And he told me he lived in Alabama. And this dude was in between Georgia and Alabama several times. Um, he actually put a little bit over the mileage, not really, nothing really significant, like 20 miles over his allotted mileage. And um, because he was a good renter, he showed up on time. I didn't trip, but there's something you got to know that when people are renting your cars, a lot of times they want to go out of state. And that can get a little interesting if it's in the hands of a bad renter and they go out of state and they decide to do something with your car out of state. You're talking about you're going to have to have your car towed. You're going to have to have your car shipped back. We're talking between towing and shipped back $600 just to get your vehicle back. So I don't really know what I'm going to do with regards to that because I had someone ask me, she's like, I want to fly into town and I want to go, I want to drive. And I was like, these cars are local rental only because, you know, I, if someone like rented this cause it's 130 and they did a week long rental and spent like 900 bucks, I wouldn't have a problem with them taking it out of state because one, they, they have a credit card. They can pay for any damage, but typically most of the rentals, it gets a little sketchy. It gets a little sketchy talking out state. So, and also because the BMW X5 didn't have GPS, I know they went to the beach. How do I know? 
There was sand in the car. They went to the beach. They went out of state, how many, I don't know how many times. And um, fortunately, that vehicle is fine because that's the vehicle that someone was doing 121. It, 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 it kind of begs you to drive it because it, it will take off. And if he had been in the 2011, he would have been going faster because that vehicle's tuned. But yeah, so you're going to see me do a big shift and I would not be surprised at the end of December that all I, I will keep the three Acuras I have because they're 2010, 2012, 2013. I will keep them. And I have a Camry. The sunroof doesn't work. I may keep that. But by December, I may just have the three Acuras and everything else may be a BMW, Range Rover, or Porsche. We could, I kind of see myself heading in that direction because Lyft has a section called Lyft Lux. So there is a marketplace for luxury vehicles and I feel that I'm gonna start filling that vehicle because essentially I've been driving BMWs for years and I have a feeling what can go wrong and as long as you change the oil and here and there you might have a hiccup like with my X5, I had that car five years and I spent $3,500 in repairs one time and that was it. So I can live with that. If a car breaks down and I have to spend 3,500 bucks and it doesn't do anything else for a few years, I can live with that. So I'm going to orient myself to these cars, these performance cars, because the car I got back last night is very zippy. It's very zippy and uh, the guy didn't want to come out of it because he didn't want the Range Rover. And I understand why he didn't want the Range Rover because the Range Rover doesn't move like that BMW. Doesn't move like that BMW at all. And I intentionally don't buy 328s. I only buy 330s, 335s, 530s, 535s, 540s and 550s because they have more powerful engines. Like the difference in the horsepower between the 330 and the 328 it's like 60 to 80. That's quite significant when it's talking about putting your foot to the pedal. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like the dude rented a 530, which is kind of like it is kind of like the Cadillac. The 530 ain't like the 330. It ain't it ain't nothing like it. So he may try to get, you know, I'm gonna have a conversation with him because like I said, I, I had to take that L because I didn't know what was going on. But one of the things that I'm probably going to do as I start buying cars is take them somewhere and have them put on a lift so I can inspect the tires, inspect everything, because I was just sitting there like, how does a tire come off a rim? And the guy at Pet Boys said, lost air. And that's exactly what it was because it had nails in it and it lost air. So if he had known that the nails were in there and had the tire plugged, none of this would have happened so going forward we're going to make some new guidance and stuff because um it, it is interesting what is happening and tomorrow i get my scanner my code scanner and i get my air compressor and like this happens in the future because like once the tire starts coming off the rim it's toast you you can't really drive it um but if I could have like caught that early, if I had really known what was going on, I could have went out there with my air compressor, filled up the tire and had it plugged and saved myself 440 bucks, 420 bucks. So it is very, very different. But yeah, that's what's going on. I'm back because like I said, we're, you know, I'm creating a brand and it's starting to work because literally I have people messaging me every day. So it's starting to work. And like it, by December, I may, not, I may not have those three Acuras because I'm not buying anything cheap going forward. I'm not buying any more cheap cars. I'm not buying any buckets because I bought cheap cars and I've had nothing but problems, nothing but problems. The Camry I spent 8,400 bucks on, and that was one of the first, I think that was, 
the first or second car that I bought. Yeah, because I know that was the fourth car that I bought, and that was the first car on the Geico policy. And had that car two months, and here we are. It's already acting up two months. Better than the first week, but granted, and more than likely, if I was like these little issues to get fixed are very expensive. Like I guarantee you to fix that bumper is gonna be eighteen hundred bucks. To fix that door latch is gonna be five hundred bucks. So we're talking about twenty three, twenty four hundred dollars to fix some and I'm just like, I'm gonna trade it. I'm just gonna trade it, get out of it, get with money because like I said, I I can I feel that once I trade it, someone's gonna, you know, they're gonna offer me five or six thousand, which the car is already made for minus six hundred, minus whatever this repair is gonna be. So I got some wiggle room to come out of that ahead. So we're getting rid of that and we're going to just start moving toward more performance oriented cars. Uh, I gotta go in here and look and see what's gonna be my next car. I got my eye on one car. Because one of the things is I, I watch certain cars and I know how fast the deal with sells them. And essentially, once I get a certain thing fixed, because like the Mini, I think he would go for it. I'll just take the Mini to him and say, look, I, I want to trade this Mini in once I get the title and I'll give you the rest of the money for this car in 30 days. And do that because that's a, another Porsche. Because I essentially, I have put... Three hundred and seven thousand minus the twenty five for the credit card, because in my mind, I'm going to put a solid three hundred thousand in cars and then twenty five thousand for the corporate credit card. And so that's how I think that's going to be the setup. And essentially, as I said in the previous video, uh, I'm trying not to buy cars in August, but it looks like it's going to happen because of the trade-ins and stuff. Because I, I don't know if I can get all that done this week. If I can, I will. I can, I will. But that's all I got for you guys. Letting you know what's going on, being fully transparent, and I will see you guys in the next one.